Hello everybody. In terms of project size, this one is by no means a small project. So for your convenience, I've broken it down into several parts. And here are the parts listed. By, uh, by chance I came across this little synchronous motor in my spares drawer made by Crozet and the thought struck me that maybe I could use this to mechanise the Paradox Drive clock that I made a while ago. Uh, now this is a synchronous motor that's the cylindrical bit on the back plus a gearbox and the gearbox allows the, sp the spindle or shaft to rotate at 20 rpm so to make the point move once around the clock every hour i'm going to need a reduction gearbox of some sort uh, to make that spin at one rep per hour so 20 rpm is 1200 revs per hour so I'm going to need a gearbox reduction ratio of 1 to 1200 or 1200 to 1. So this is what we'll be doing first we start off of course with the basic clock and then we're going to add a big ring gear which we're going to drive around and haul the minute hand around with it. So we'll put up the ring gear. There's the ring gear there. It's going to be rotating on six roller bearings around the inside of the ring. And the minute hand will have a, like a peg passing through it which will haul it round. Uh, there it is shown there then that's going to be mechanized with a set of gears which will mesh with the ring gear and the first one is the reverser wheel which will reverse the action of the actual gearbox itself which comprises of a pinion here which is five teeth meshing with the big ring gear five into 150 goes 30 so there's your 30 to 1 ratio which is driven by another pair that this gear is bonded onto the little five pin one so that's where you get your reduction from there then there's another one driving that one 25 teeth driven by five that's a five to one reduction and bonded onto this one is another 20 tooth gear which is being driven by another five tooth so there's a four to one then bonded onto that five tooth is the 16 tooth gear being driven by the motor pinion which is eight tooth so there's a two to one so now we've got a, a 40 to one gearbox driving a 30 to one ratio onto the ring gear then that's housed uh, that housed on a, on a plate and then there's a, a center spacer with cutouts just to fit the gears so then they're nicely housed in the sp the mid spacer plate now on top of that there's a top plate covers the whole lot and then the motor fits on 
top of all that lot. So there's the whole gearbox driving the ring gear. Now you're probably wondering how I managed to design the little gear wheels for the gearbox. Well, I decided to invest in a nice little piece of software called Gear Template Generator. And this substantially solved all my gearbox design problems. With it you can vary the number of teeth in both pinion and spur. You can have pinwheels. Vary the spokes, number of spokes, four, three, the pitch diameter, spacing between shafts, etc. etc. A nice little program specifically designed for gear wheels of varying types. And this helped me a great deal. For the ring gear I chose a pitch diameter and a tooth spacing and number of teeth to get as close as I could to an overall diameter of 400 millimeters. Now 420 millimeters is the outside diameter of the clock face so that gives me 10 millimeters between the tips of the teeth and the edge of the clock. That was enough uh, for the meshing gear to align nicely with the ring gear. So that looked good to me and for the pinion I chose five teeth down here Meshing with 150 teeth, which gave a nice ratio of 30 to 1, which gave quite an easy calculation together with the gearbox to arrive at a total gear ratio of 1200 to 1. Now we can look at this meshing in a bit more detail by changing the screen view. If we reduce the screen view we'll get a closer look at the pinion meshing with the ring gear. Isn't that nice? And if those lines are a bit thin we can thicken them up and draw thicker lines. So that might Short a bit better on the video. I can also show a grid on the video. That's quite a coarse, quite a fine one. We can go up to ten millimeters there. We can also put grid diagonals on, so that when this is printed out on multiple sheets of paper, they can be cut up and the grids align perfectly both horizontally, vertically and diagonally. A nice little touch there. We can also show centres and show a line of contact. Very nice. Show pitch diameter, we can take that off. And if we take all these off, all we get is the raw gear meshing. And just for fun we can make it all wobbly. Wobbly mode is just for fun. Try it with animation. Does not produce working gears. Well, how about that? <laughs> so just for completeness here are the other gear ratios that have been designed. Uh, this is the two to one with an eight tooth driving a sixteen tooth four to one 
which is a five tooth driving a twenty tooth five to one which is another five tooth driving a twenty five tooth and that is all the gears explained.